Electric cars need different tires. Here's how they're different and what happens if you don't know that. In case you haven't noticed, EVs are different from combustion cars, from their big batteries all the way down to their rubber boots. Here are four reasons why. EVs can weigh a thousand pounds more, so their tires have to shoulder that while still delivering good tread wear and not folding up in a corner. EVs torque the hell out of tires. A Hummer EV accelerates as fast as a Ferrari Roma while weighing more than two of whatever it is you drive now. EVs are shrouded in our neuroses about range, so their tires can't just be energy sapping marshmallows, they have to have low rolling resistance. And EVs are really quiet. When you get rid of engine noise, it's funny, you really start to notice tire noise. So there better be very little of it coming from those tires, or if there is, it better sound kind of pleasant. It all adds up to a triangle of grip or performance, rolling resistance or efficiency and range, and tread wear or value. These kind of pull against each other. Now you can balance all those and say I want them in equal measure, or you can say no, one of those matters a lot more to me than the others. And then you can pull the triangle points where you want them. Conventional tires are the same way to be sure, but with EVs I think the stakes are higher because if they don't do all three of those well, I think it's very noticeable, more so than with conventional car tires. Now, tires that go after these three points of the triangle, specifically for electric cars, are pretty rare right now, but they're gonna become a torrent. And this is gonna be the biggest change in tires since radials got popular back in the 70s. That's the 1970s. For example, the latest electric car tire as of today's taping is Hankook's Ion Evo AS. It claims 25% higher lateral or sidewall stiffness. Cleverly interlocking sipes, those are the cuts in the tread. They're designed to allow it to conform to the road, but not so much that they get all bent out of shape under all that weight. They say the tread pattern has been tuned in a way to reduce monotonous pattern droning and to shift it to something more pleasant. And inside the tire is a thick band of this noise reduction material that you really never heard about until electric car tires inspired it. It's really interesting. Of course, other tire companies have tires with similar attributes. Goodyear has similar techniques in its electric drive tires. Michelin's EV tires are called Pilot Sport EV. Pirelli has electric car tires that save a syllable. They're just called elect. And over at Continental, another big maker, I seem to notice less of an emphasis on electric specific tires and more on tires that can be used really well for electric cars, but are not necessarily sold as just for them. Which brings up an interesting point. If you go to the tire shop with your EV and they say, oh, here's a great tire, and it doesn't scream electric on the sidewall, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're being bamboozled or sold whatever they happen to have. An electric car does not have to have an electric car tire. It's not that stark of a difference, but there is a noticeable one. However, a high-performance conventional tire may have all the attributes we're talking about, save for that interesting band of noise material baked into the casing. That tends to be kind of an EV-specific thing, but you may find it. The tire industry has also adopted a new load rating on an interesting scale that used to begin with LL for light load, SL for standard load, and the big boy used to be XL, extra load. But now this new one is called HL, or high load. It carries a similar high load as the XL tires, but can do so with higher pressure, higher inflation. What's interesting there is it allows a heavy car to sit on that tire and not deform the tread so that it wears unevenly, and also to retain more of a stiffness in the casing so that heavier car can take corners and the whole tire doesn't fold up underneath it. The Lucid Air, for example, uses a Pirelli P0 tire from the factory that is HL rated. I gotta say, for an old purist like me, Pirelli P0 and heavy load rating is a combination that's hard to get together in my head. You never would have imagined that back in the day. A P0 was always for a car that was kind of light and svelte and high performance, but now 
That also means heavy. Further in the future are exotic ideas for EVs like Goodyear's Recharge concept. Among other things, it lets you regrow wear parts of the tire by inserting a cartridge of liquid material that would be selected based on your climate or trip style. Yeah, not happening tomorrow, but if you have an EV, what I do want you to do tomorrow is think about rotating your tires and get that down to habit, which I know you probably have never done before. No one really loves to do it. But with an EV, it's more important because there's so much more punishment given to each tire, as well as the driven tires. Even on an all-wheel drive vehicle, some tires are driven more than others. And rotating these tires around is important because I believe EVs are going to chew through tires more quickly when things are starting to go downhill than a conventional car would have. And finally, a pet theory or a pet thought I have. As EV tires become kind of the only major regular maintenance expense on a car. No oil changes, no tune-ups, no spark plugs, no filters, all this nonsense drops away. And you end up basically doing tires. Will the tire industry look at that and say, huh, we can raise our prices because they've got a whole lot of additional money they're saving from their old gas engine car, including on gas, that they can now spend on tires and well, if prices all go up, they'll do it. This happens in other areas of automotive. When financing is extremely cheap for cars, one of the effects is car prices go up because we can get into those more expensive cars at about the same monthly nut, even though we're buying a car where the MSRP has gone through the roof. I'm not saying it will happen in the tire market, but it's one of the things I'll be watching with a half cynical eye.